try to demonstrate using SQL developer to do a data pump export. Now in this case, I've connected to a 19C pluggable database. So if I've connected to that, I can see the name and GUID that I've connected to. That's, my, that's the database that I've connected to. And what are the directories? The default directory for a data pump export is always the data pump DR. So you can see the data pump DR actually has a GUID name embedded in it. Let me just show you that again. There's a GUID. And there's a data pump DR. Now, when you want to run a data pump from SQL developer, remember that all the SQL developer is a client application running for your Windows desktop or a Linux desktop. The the data pump dump file and log file are always created on the server because data pump is a server side program, unlike the original EXP legacy program, which could be which could extract your data to a client. Data pump will always extract to the server. So the location where the data pump will be uh, extracting to is on the DBA directories. The default location, if you don't specify a directory name, is data pump DIR. And in, in a pluggable database, data pump DIR maps to the GUID name of your database. So that's where I, where I am currently. I don't have any files here. I'm going to connect using a user ID that has DBA privileges. For data pump, you need, don't need to have a DBA role, but if you want to export any schema other than your own schema, you need EXP full database privilege. So I'm going to use the, the Heyman's account to export the HR schema. So there's under SQL developer, if you define a DBA connection, you can go to data pump. And you can see the export jobs and import jobs that I've executed. But I'm going to use the data pump wizard to create a new export. So first, I have to specify what I want to export. I'm going to export data and DDL, and I'm going to export a schema. Then I can select the schema they want to export, and it's just the HR schema alone. Of course, I could have done a filter by specifying partial name here. Next, I could also define my own data pump, include and exclude filters here by adding rows and defining, for example, uh, let's say, table and then put an expression here and so on. But I'm not going to filter anything. Then I want to specify what tables I'm going to export. So I'm just going to select all the tables in that schema, so in the HR schema, and just select all the tables. I could, of course, exclude certain. I can also look at the data in that uh, table, like this is the country's table. So I can look at the data here. I can look at the employees table and the data. So these are all the tables that I'm going to export. Next, I can specify the options. So remember when you run a data pump export, it provides an estimate based on blocks or you can calculate again. So my estimate here is based on blocks, not statistics. I'm going to export to data pump DR, which is the default location. I just showed you that here. From DBA directories, that is this location here. I can create, specify the log file name. When you run a data pump export, you can specify it's compatible with specific versions. I am running SQL Developer 21.4 connected to a 19C database. So I could <clears throat> run a data pump export where it is where compatibility is set to a low version, 12C and above. <clears throat> but right now I just specify compatible, meaning the same version that I'm running from. You can choose to delete the master table. <clears throat> I prefer not to delete the master table. I can use it to query for data later. So I'm not going to delete the master table. So, <clears throat> so I can specify the the output files, <coughs> it defaults to exp that percentage u. So I could just say 
Remember, percentage u means it automatically appends file numbers to each of the files. If the files are very large, it just keeps on adding more uh, numbers. So you can specify each file is of whatever size you want to specify. Once the first file exceeds that size, <coughs> it creates a new file and appends a number using the percentage u format. <coughs> I can also append the timestamp to the names. I can run compression, but remember to do data compression, I need to have license the advanced compression option. I could schedule the job later, but I'm going to run it right now. SQL developer in current versions now also <coughs> allows you to export to <coughs> an object store in the cloud. But here I'm going to export to my database server file system. So I'm not going to export to object store. So I can specify a job name also. It defaults to a, a job name, but I can just specify a job name and a description. So this is what I've specified so far. I'm exporting in this from this database for this HR schema. I can actually look at the PLSQL that will be generated. So, like I said, data pump is a server side utility, so it's going to actually invoke PLSQL on the server to generate the export dump. So I can view the PLSQL and I can save it for manual usage later. So this is the PLS is going to execute. Once I start, I can view the job here. I just put this in the background. <coughs> and then start viewing the export job. So it's, it's going to query for whatever available export jobs are running. So this is the export job that I'm running. Remember, it appended the data, data uh, the time as well to the job name that I specified. And I can view the details of the job. I can just do a refresh every five seconds here. So this is the owner. This is the job name. It's exporting to data pump DR. The log file is HR export timestamp.log. And now I can see the estimate that is presenting. Remember when I specify the estimate, it should be based on blocks. So the estimate is based on blocks. It's finished doing the estimates. Now it's exporting the individual object types. <coughs> so, and this is being refreshed every five seconds. So it's still running the export. It's just going through all the object types. I can view the files that have been created here. So this is the export log and this is the dump file. I could view the export log from the server side as well, so which matches what I see here. What it shows here is basically the, the log that is extracting from the master table for the data pump export job. And what I see here is a log file on the server side. So both are matching. This PLSQL procedure completed that does not mean that the data pump export is completed. It just means that this refresh every five seconds is completed, but the data pump is still running. I could also do a refresh here if I wanted to. I can refresh this. I have multiple data pump export jobs running concurrently. I could refresh from here. But since I have only one job, I'm reading it here. Okay, now it, I can see that it has exported all the tables, finished, uh, created the dump file and finish the job. So I can stop refreshing if I want to. Let me just refresh here. It's almost completed. Do a manual refresh. Not here. And you can see now that it is no longer running. There's no sessions running, no attached sessions. So if I view on the server side, This is the log file for the data pump, at which I could monitor also from here, from export jobs. This is the running export job. 
and I have chosen not to delete the master tables. If I were, were to go back into my schema, this is the master table for that export dump. It's, it's got a lot of details in it, but I can view it the data of that master table. And if I scroll to the right, you can see object name. What is the object type that is being exported, which matches what you would see in the log file? There's each object has a path. For example, comment is 291, ground is 283. So that's basically a path that it generates for the object types. And then we come here. This is the Unfortunately, this is not ordered by anything. You, can, you don't see any ordering here when I query the table. So I could write my own select query on this master table. This is the master table. I could write my own select query and do my own ordering. Then I come here, scroll down. So the master table contains a lot of information. You can always choose to preserve the master table when you do a data pump export. The default is the master table gets dropped when the when the data pump export completes. Let me just scroll down here. And you can see here these are the objects that are the, the tables, the actual tables that are exported, sequences, the actual sequences that got exported here, the privileges and the grants. These are all the tables. The grants on the objects. So all that information is visible in the master table. You could write your own select query against the master table. For example, I could just query for original object name. So let me just open a new query session. And this is the master table This is uh, because it has a dash in it. Unfortunately, because I allowed it to append the timestamp, there's a dash in the table name. So let me just do. Now I can specify the table name properly. And I'll just specify these are all the objects that were exported. Of course, I could see that here with all the, I could even query for maybe the object type path and the object type in my query. So it's a good idea never to drop the master table when you're doing export. But the default behavior of data pump is to drop the master table when the export is completed. So this is a quick demo using data pump. You use the wizard. I'm just going to select specific table. Let me just select a table. So now it's going to query only my own table, my own schema. So this is the one table that I'm exporting. I'm exporting to data pump DI. Let me just use the default log file name. Default file name for the data pump. Okay, and then default job name. So if I want to run this in the background. And you can see this is the new job that was, that was running. I 
can refresh for this job. So in this job, I'm just exporting only one table from my schema. And the table export is almost completed. I need to refresh here. And now you can see there's no session attached to it. It is completed. So you can use data pump export from SQL developer client by the dump file and the log file are created on the server. So if you want to view the details of the log file, you can actually view them using the export jobs viewer here. Or you can go and go into the schema and query the table. So this, but there's a lot of rows in this table, but you can see. You can see that it doesn't get ordered by, but that's fine. You can do your own order by when you manually create the table. For a single table export, you can see the master table has a lot of information. And here is the information for the table that I exported. ABC table from the remaining schema. This is the statistics of the table data. So that is a quick demo. You can use data pump export from SQL developer, create the log files and the dump file on the server, view the information in the master table from your SQL developer or uh, SQL query pane or view the export job details from the DBA connection pane.